It was a happy day, the first unhappy slave first landed on America's shores. Duke Ellington's controversial statement referred to the fact that without the slave trade bringing African rhythms into contact with European harmony, jazz would simply not exist. It was in New Orleans around the turn of the 19th century that African-American and Creole musicians began creating a new music by mixing the syncopations of ragtime with the soulful melodies of the blues. By the start of the 20th century, people were calling this new sound jazz. In 1917, the all-white original Dixieland jazz band made the first ever jazz recording. Livery Stable Blues became an unexpected hit and America went jazz crazy. The era F. Scott Fitzgerald called the Jazz Age was about to begin. During the 1920s, two extraordinary talents emerged that changed jazz forever. Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington. Armstrong was a street kid from New Orleans who, along with band leader Joe King Oliver, took the new hot jazz sound to Chicago and found a new audience for his virtuoso trumpet improvisations and his unique brand of scat singing. Meanwhile, in New York's celebrated Cotton Club, Duke Ellington's band of black musicians played music of unprecedented skill and sophistication to a whites-only audience. Ellington's beautiful and intricate compositions lifted jazz to the level of high art. Following the Wall Street crash of 1929, America entered a decade of economic depression and jazz became the music that lifted the spirits of a nation. Benny Goodman, hailed as the king of swing, began broadcasting his big band sound nationwide and jazz became America's popular music with band leaders enjoying the status of matinee idols both at home and across the globe. In 1940, America was preparing itself for the inevitability of war. Many big bands were forced to dismantle when their musicians were drafted into the army. In an underground Harlem nightclub called Minton's Playhouse, a small band of young musicians led by the trumpet virtuoso Dizzy Gillespie and the troubled genius Charlie Parker discovered a new way of playing. Fast, hard, complex, challenging, and sometimes chaotic, bebop reflected America's anxious mood. Yet few people other than true jazz initiates and the beatniks were listening to bebop, and musicians began seeking a new audience. One musician determined to give jazz a broader appeal was the young trumpeter Miles Davis. A one-time member of Charlie Parker's bop band, Davis made a series of recordings in 1949 and 50 which were released collectively as the birth of the cool. California became the home of the new West Coast sound and the epitome of cool was the youthful, brooding and rebellious Chet Baker with his James Dean looks and airy, laid-back sound. Throughout the 1950s, jazz had become an increasingly intellectual art form and it was in 1960 that saxophonist Ornett Coleman made the revolutionary album Free Jazz. The new avant-garde style was unstructured and almost entirely improvised and for many it came to symbolize the struggle for freedom of black Americans during the 1960s. By the late 60s, jazz musicians were becoming increasingly influenced by rock supergroups such as Cream and the Jimi Hendrix Experience. 
Miles Davis, always searching for new ideas, created a new electronic sound on the album Bitches Brew, and Jazz Fusion was born, mixing jazz, rock, soul, funk, and Eastern influences. Jazz Fusion was commercially successful throughout the 70s, with bands such as the Mahavishnu Orchestra, Weather Report, and the Headhunters performing to a new, younger audience. The 80s saw the lines between jazz, rock and pop becoming increasingly blurred. Jazz guitarist George Benson scored a massive dance hit with Give Me The Night and Herbie Hancock blended jazz and hip-hop when he recorded the first single to feature scratching. Towards the end of the 80s and exploding into the 90s, a new acid jazz style emerged with bands like the Brand New Heavies, the James Taylor Quartet and Jamiroquai popularizing a more danceable jazz influence vibe. During the 1990s, the saxophonist Courtney Pine led a new wave of British jazz artists mixing jazz, soul, reggae, hip hop and African sounds. The 90s also saw the resurgence of swing, popularized by Harry Connick Jr and with reissues of classic Rat Pack recordings and concerts. By the 21st century, the jazz revival was in full swing. Artists such as Jamie Cullum, Diana Krall, Amy Winehouse, Corin Bailey Ray and Nora Jones were enjoying huge album sales, whilst more experimental acts like Soweto Kinch and Orjos de Brujas continued to move jazz in new and exciting directions. In just over a century, jazz has risen from its humble beginnings in the American South to become a massively popular, hugely influential and internationally respected art form. I want you to get together. I want you to get together.